Georgia's of Hope is a nonprofit committed to inspiring a sense of community and well-being in hospitals through the, the donation of athletic jerseys to be worn by patients rooting for their favorite team. In the past seven years, Jerseys of Hope has given out over 2,000 jerseys to lift the spirits of hospital patients. They have impacted the needy in four countries in 11 states. Please visit jerseysofhope.org to learn more. We're so honored to partner with Jerseys of Hope and be a small part of the large impact they make. Let my tree bear good fruit so I can be used by you. Welcome to the Unscripted Podcast. This is Caitlin. Each episode, my Uncle Aaron interviews guests that are living their lives unscripted. The song you are hearing is the music from our dear friends, Tori and Shauna. You can find their music wherever you stream your favorite songs. For now, from his studio, here's my Uncle Aaron. Welcome back to Unscripted from my Jerseys of Hope studios here in Columbus, Ohio. I'm rocking my Guardians hat. My guest is rocking his L.A. hat. It is opening day. It's opening day. So, man, how are you? Could you introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Yeah, my name is Noah Asher, and uh, I am repping the Dodgers today. Big Dodgers fan, but I live in Georgia, so tell me how that works. No, I have I have family in LA, so it makes sense. And for real baseball fans, they'll know that Freddie Freeman, who used to play for the Atlanta Braves, is tough in LA. So that's how it works. I'm the next Freddie Freeman. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> I'm a, an author. Currently, a new author of the book called Chaos Overcoming the Overwhelming. And it's a Christian nonfiction book. Some people call it a self help book, but I actually make a joke on the back that it's, it's more than a self help. This is, it's not an autobiography. It's not a self help. It's, it's truly taking stories, real life stories from real, real life people and saying, this is how they overcame and we can do the same. It's, and it's taking stories your own. Yeah, from what I, I understand, right? I do share stories that are personal to me. And that's something that we, after I started writing the book, it was something that I wanted to talk to my team about and go, should I share my story? Because I don't want to turn off because sometimes people are gracious, some people are not. And so I was like, yeah. do I share my story and and just open up that vulnerability? And for me, it was, I, I really felt, like God was just telling me, you have to do it this way because it it's hiding looks like guilt and guilt looks like shame. And so I didn't want to, to, to hide. And, and it wasn't originally that I wanted to hide it. It was just more of, I just wanted to steer clear to, to not turn people off, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. But it's actually been because when you follow what Jesus tells you to do, it, it turns out better than what you imagine. And so it's funny that so many of the reviews talk about, oh man, I love his vulnerability that he's willing to open up about his own story. And no matter how raw and real it is, it's good to see. Because I think for so long, the the, the Christian community wants to have that white picket fence and, and make it mm-hmm. look like they dress up on Sunday. And it's funny, they dress up on Sunday and then they're also physically dressing up, but they're also mentally and emotionally dressing up and saying, you know, the whole, how are you? Good or blessed, highly favored is what people say, you know, you know, the Sunday school <laughs> answers, but it's like, right. how are you really? And, and yeah. there's times where, you know, I want people to say, I'm, I'm not doing well. Let's talk about it. Let her pray for me. And that's where for me, um, I wanted this book to be like, I wasn't doing well, pray for me. But also this is how I went from overwhelming to overcoming. Mm-hmm. And it's been good because a lot of my platform is inside prisons and rehab centers and addiction centers. And so mm-hmm. it works because people never say to me, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. They're like, oh, you you understand. And it gives them a message of hope that he did it. I can do it. Yeah. And that is really important for me because I the story starts off for me where I was incarcerated years ago. Mm-hmm. And I would go to these little chapel services and you'd have these older gentlemen come and you can tell they've, they've had no sort of chaos in their life. And they're going, oh, you got this. You're going to get through this. And I'm like, am I? How do you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. that's not something that I, I hear often. It's incredible, dude. It's so weird to me that, that 
First of all, people need to know, I just ask you offline, how did you find me? And you found me through some random yeah. uh, thing that <laughs> like, it's really weird. And so here you are today, but here's, here's the thing, the, the message of grace weekend, if people have listened to it was about uh, Luke six, where this man stands up with a shriveled hand and he, and Jesus calls him to stand up and show his hand. And that's exactly what you just said. That's why it's crazy yeah. to me that we're even on this interview right now. That right. That, that 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 God would just you know bring you to find me somehow, and now we're on this interview. And yeah. you, that's that's your book. And so, dude, I I have so many notes. I love first of all. For, so you it, and it wasn't just prison. Another thing that you've you've battled was lupus. Can you yeah. just talk about that for a minute? Yeah. So we're coming on almost here two years ago now that I was diagnosed with lupus and I found it because it was like a skin form and muscle form. And I knew it's because my leg was just getting weak and I could barely walk and I was itching like crazy. And then all of a sudden I could, I just wasn't able to walk at all. And I was in a wheelchair. And yeah. for that process, it was a lot of just changing my diet and started exercising. And now I run two miles every day. So that's amazing. It's it's crazy that that's what I've been through. But what's for for me, that's what I wanted this book to be for the word chaos. Is it's so interchangeable. I've been at book signing events where people will see the banner, and I try to keep. I always try to write with hope, help, and humor. So I do like to right. to keep it fun, but not ever belittle someone's chaos or pain because I know it's real. Trust me. And, but even my banner says new book, who dis, and, <laughs> and then it's like, then it says chaos on it and Love it makes it. people stop, you know, and look yeah. at it. But it's funny because people will walk by and go chaos. That sounds like my life. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I chose that word. And it's such a good placeholder for anyone who's going through something. For me, it was incarceration. For me, it was illness. I recently lost my father, so I understand chaos in the form of loss. But some people understand chaos in the form of rejection or bankruptcy, job loss, cancer diagnosis. I mean, that's illness. But yeah, you get my point. Divorce. Sure. The, the uh, list is endless. Addiction. Addiction. Right. And so while the list is endless and while our chaos may look different, the road to overcoming that is very similar. And it and it's mm -hmm. all based on the foundation that Jesus is in charge and he'll get us through it. I talk a lot about Joseph and how mm. he went from pit to prison to palace. Yes. And I tell people in my little, it's called an elevator speech, something you can say very <laughs> briefly about the book. But I right. tell people all the time, I'm like, yeah, just like we talk about how Joseph went from pit to the palace, his God is my God. And so if uh, God can do it for Joseph, he can do it for me and he can do it for right. you. And that's ultimately what I wanted this book to be. Uh, like I said, I talk about hope, help, and humor. And uh, for me, I wanted the hope part to be like, okay, if, if someone is on the ledge going, I don't know what to do, I'm ready to jump. It's giving that message of hope to say, hey, you're going to get through this and you will get through this. And Jesus is with you. He's fighting for you and get them off that ledge. Then the next step is, okay, now that you're off, what do you do? And so that's mm -hmm. that form of help to provide you know, steps. And I understand, you know, that's why I don't like a lot of self-help books because it's, it's like, the, oh, you're telling me there's only one way. No, there's, there's a steps. You can do it this way, that way. But that's one thing that I've made very clear in my book was that I'm going to share some of my story, but it's not an autobiography. It's not a memoir. It's not just hearing how I did it. I share stories about people in history, people I also know, I even look at Abraham Lincoln, you know, we look at things and that are historical and how people have overcome their sort of overwhelming. I mean, Abraham Lincoln, he struggled with depression. And so we look at stuff like that. And another thing I try to do is some of the stories I include are what some may say in a world of social media today and what you put on social media and it's those big moments. I try to make very clear that overcoming your overwhelming isn't always shaking hands with the president. Mm. Sometimes overcoming your overwhelming is waking up today when you're, when mm. you feel paralyzed from your pain and saying, I'm going to get up out of bed. I'm going to brush right. my teeth and I'm going to win today. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the, the overall theme of the book is, is letting them know that 
they can be victorious today and then they're going to be victorious tomorrow until it just grows. One of the things that I heard in your, in your video was you own it rather than it owning you. Yeah. Dude, that's powerful. Like I, I wrote that down immediately because I think we can do that. It becomes a part of our personality. It becomes a part of our daily living. We just pick up that backpack every single day. And I'd rather own the backpack than having to have that backpack own me. I, yes. I love I loved that when you said that. And I think it goes to a lot of the things that you have said. Yeah. And I would, the best way I can put it, and I put it this way in the book, I talk about the Lion King with Simba and mm-hmm. how he had the rightful place. He could he just could not wait to be king, right? That was the song. And then he lost his father. And it was the time for him to become the king. Yeah. Well, Scar was like, you murderer, you failure. And those sorts of words took hold of him that it made him flee. He ran away. Simba ran. And that's something that we do a lot of times is we allow chaos to define us. And it takes ownership over us. And that's one thing I've had to learn about about God's personality, but also at the same time, the personality of the enemy is that the enemy will try so hard to destroy our, our character because he knows our calling is untouchable. Yeah. It's in Romans 11 that says our calling is irrevocable in Romans 11. Mm. And that's very important to remember for, for the person who's going through chaos, but also to understand that the enemy knows that as well. He right. knows your calling is irrevocable. And mm. so he's like, okay, well, if I cannot touch his his calling, I have to go after who what he thinks about himself, right, or herself. I have to go after his character, her character. Those are the things the enemy will try so hard to do to to rock us and to wreck us, so we forget all about our purpose and all about our calling. And mm. that's what I want this book to be. Is a I, I tell people it this way: I want it to be the brightest of lights for people who are in their dark, darkest of pits. Yeah. And that's what I want this book to be. I want to shine light and shine hope on people who are, are just overwhelmed. I love it. And, and I think there's trigger words for people. Shame is one. Yeah. As soon as I say the word shame, if anybody's listening to me and, and they just can't, we just came out of grace week and we talked about shame. If I say the word shame immediately, everybody knows what their shame is. Like immediately, I don't have to tell you, you already know chaos. If I say chaos, that's another trigger word and and trigger in a good way or bad way. I'm not sure which that means, but if I say the word chaos, as soon as I say that, and so I like the title of the book, one of the things that, that really, uh, well, first of all, let's do this because if, just in case people like, like when people leave church early before the final announcements, where can people find the book? Uh, the best thing to do is just go to the Noah com, and then you'll see all the links as to where you can buy it, but it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart, uh, books a million Christian com. So pretty much everywhere. So you can just Google the book, but you can also just go to the Noah com, and you'll, you'll see it. And you're going to find, I, I, we were talking offline a little bit. I have a feeling this isn't the last that we've heard of. Noah Asher. So there'll be <laughs> well, thank more you. coming. All right. Let me, let me run through some more of my notes. One of the things you said was going alone is the worst idea. Yeah. It's to me, it's very important to understand that you need allies when you yeah. are walking through any storm, but also when you're preparing for battle, what, who, who would be wanting to fight a battle alone, right? Right. Unless you're King David, I guess, with a stone. I was just but, say David is about yeah, the only David's, guy I know, right? That's, that's <laughs> it. You pretty much, you want to have these people in your corner. And, and and that's what I really try to hit heavy from the very beginning is before your chaos even begins, make sure you surround yourself with with friends that are very described in Mark chapter two. And, and, and in Mark chapter two, you see this person who's paralyzed from their pain. And, and literally paralyzed from 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 birth, and he's sitting there. And his his four friends go, "Hey, we know Jesus is close by. Let's carry this guy, our friend, to Jesus." And yeah. when they get there, that is two two packed. So they take him to the roof. They lower him through the roof to Jesus. And Jesus looks at the paralyzed man, but then he looks at the friends, and he goes, "By your faith, guys, your friend is healed." 
Right. And we have to understand something. Sometimes our chaos and our hurt can be so paralyzing that we need people in our corner who's willing to to carry us to Jesus and lower us to Jesus through prayer and through even intercession on our behalf to fight that battle for us when we are just too weak to do it ourselves. One of my favorite quotes is from Bob Goff. I don't know if you've ever yeah. read Bob Goff's Love book, Goff. Love Does, right? Yeah. Uh, I heard him one time say that the average hospital bed has room for six people, eight if they're skinny. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite quotes. That's but, funny. But the, the point was, when he said that, it's so chilling because the average hospital bed has room for six people. You know, in, in scripture, we see where four people, you know, yeah. carried their friend. And the other thing I would say, when they carried their friend and, he, and they lowered him down, Jesus didn't say you're healed right away. What he says is your sins are forgiven. And like, man, we, we brought this dude to, to heal him and and he told him first, your sins are forgiven. Like that was the most important part, I think. And and hopefully I'm not yeah. taking it out of context, but you, you, you understand the point. But I do want, I want to go to to war. I want people in my circle that will be willing to carry me, or I want six people around my hospital bed that I know intentionally will battle, whether it's through prayer or be with me till the end. That's what yes. I want in my life. And I'm so thankful that Bob Goff said that. You said something too that I thought was so important. And that's, you talked about a sword and a shield, a sword yeah. in one hand, a shield in the other. I'll let you sell this, but but I loved your quote in the fight for the person on your right and defend the people on your left. I'm from Cleveland. And so <laughs> in Cleveland, that's, that's my 216. My kids know when my 216 comes out, <laughs> it's about to be on because I'm yeah. going to fight for my family and for my friends. Like the, I, it's just, it comes out. It's just in me. And so I, it really resonated with me when you talked about fighting for the person on your right, but defending the people on your left, man. I love that. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. It actually, do you know the author, Mark Batterson? Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Phenomenal guy. Right. He right. said something a long time ago that's always resonated with me is that all ologies point to theology. So mm. when you study different forms of ologies, you can find God at it all. Even neurology, and you study the brain, the intricacies of the brain, you realize, wow, there has to be a God because it's so intricate and so detailed. Yeah. Um, right. And so when I write, I always have that in the back of my mind. And so while I always reference, first and foremost, the scripture and, and the Bible, I always try to find examples in other sorts of ologies. And so one thing I like to do is always go to history because I, I just love history. And so that what you're referencing is in that same chapter of allies where I talk about Mark chapter two, I talk about how the Greeks used to use a form of uh, battle strategy. It was called hoplite. And the idea was all the Greeks would stand, all the soldiers would stand in a line and they would have a, a weapon in their right hand and a shield in their left. And the mm. idea was as the, the enemy approached, you fought for the person on your right and you would shield the person on your left. And as mm -hmm. long as everyone did that, you would win. It was victorious. Mm -hmm. But if one, you know, try to run away or crumbled, the whole line would crumble. And that's what's so important about making sure you, your friends are people who are willing to stand on that line and fight for one, but also two, to make sure that they are strong and like abled. And I don't mean physically, I mean spiritually, emotionally. You know, you mm -hmm. don't want to surround yourselves with people. I I go through a different, I go in that chapter and I talk about different levels of friends and I talk about fair weather friends, right? That once the storm comes, right. they, I, I say it's they're like gone. they're the roadrunner, beep, beep, zoom, you know, they're gone. <laughs> they're out of there. That's fair weather friends for sure. Yeah. And yeah. you want hoplite friends. And I, I've said this forever. I've always said, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. 100%. And that's that's one thing that's super important when you're when you're making sure that even before the storm comes and the battle comes your way because they always come. Something mm -hmm. can come up even if it's small rain showers or just small little battles. Bottom line is we want to make sure that you have a, an army already in the works. You don't want to wait yeah. until the arm the the enemy's already approached. That's right. too late to start doing a roll call. <laughs> That's right. 
It's like, where are we at? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I, I love it as a dad and, and as hopefully a, a friend that's loyal. I, I, I really do love that concept because as the dad, that's my shield. Yeah. I, I will absolutely defend my wife, my kids till, till the day I die. But also for right. my friends, I will, I will fight for yeah. what I believe in, right? My belief. And so I, I, I really love that concept because with the sword, I will fight for my beliefs for Cleveland. <laughs> I seriously, I will defend <laughs> that city because it's just my home. Right. And, and I don't know, that's just the way I was raised. It's what I believe in. And, and so there's, there's certain principles that I have that on that right or left hand, I guess you'd say with the sword, I will fight like crazy for those, but then I have my shield side too for the things that I absolutely, those are my non-negotiables and I will yeah. die for those and I will defend them until the very end. Man, if we could all stand shoulder to shoulder with those kind of, and I'm not saying I have it right. I'm saying those are mine and I, I want to be surrounded in my circle. I want to be in that line with people that share the same values that, that no, I've yeah. you've got my back. I've got yours, man. That's, I really, really love that. The other thing you talked about was the pit in the palace. You mentioned this earlier that it's so funny to me that you and I somehow found each other through the <laughs> internet. As we talked about earlier, my favorite verse, my favorite Bible verse is not Jesus wept or John three sixteen. It is Genesis fifty twenty. Yes. Uh, Period. Full same. stop. That is my, when, when a little kid walks up to me in church and says, Hey, what's your favorite Bible verse? I'm going to tell him Genesis fifty twenty. Right. Can you talk about Genesis fifty twenty? Because if it does, people don't know who it is, and they're running or know what it is, and they're running out to listen to it right now or yeah. read it. Can you talk about Genesis fifty twenty for me? You know, I've never heard it. No, I'm just kidding. That's the same. <laughs> it's, it's definitely my. It's it's my go to, and it's what changed my life when it comes to chaos. Because yeah. you know, if you run to Hobby Lobby right now and you get some wall art, because you're all about this verse, you're gonna find three-fourths of it. And I'll actually even say 90% of the verse is going to be painted on the sign. And it's the what the enemy intended for evil, God uses for good. And that's normally what you see, but the verse continues. The verse yeah. actually says what the enemy intends for evil, God will use it for good to save many. And those right. three words are, to me, what was life-changing. Because I go, okay, not only is God going to turn things around for me and for my sake, but it's to help save many. Not that I can save anyone, but I can point people to the Savior. Right. And that's why, again, it goes back to being willing to be vulnerable and to share your story. Revelation talks about it's by the words of your testimony, right? That's you right. have to be willing to share your testimony because somebody will hear that and go, you know what? He can do it or she can do it. I can do it. And, and that's what it comes down to, and that's why when you can stop for a moment and share, hey, listen, this is what the enemy meant for evil, and this is how God used it for good, and you share those things, you're helping save many without you even realizing it. Right. And I put it this way is that within your pain, you'll find your purpose, but it's right. within your purpose that you'll actually find your platform. Yeah, And that's what I want for people is that Anyone listening to this right now, you may go, the enemy told me I was down and out, but cool. I'm here to tell you that you're not destroyed. You may be, uh, there's a book by Pastor Michael Todd. It's called Damaged But Not Destroyed. And that's for anyone listening to this right now. If you feel damaged, cool, but you're not destroyed. There's still, there's still a fight in you. There's still light in you. And you have to, to search for that and hold on to that. And, and then realize that now you can take that and help elevate it and, and shine a light for other people to get out of their own sort of pit. There was three words, pain, purpose, and platform. Yes. I wrote that down too. So w you're stealing my notes. You are, you probably. <laughs> I saw them. <laughs> we did not, we did not rehearse this. This is unscripted. Yeah. I wrote down pain, purpose, platform. Cause I agree. If people are listening to this very podcast right now, that was born out of pain, purpose, and platform. This podcast, whether it's, the five people that listen, or if they share it with somebody six, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it, it is a platform and, and it came out of pain and purpose. I realized the, the pain in my life and I decided that I have a purpose in my life 
and yes. back to 5020 that's you know and and some some versions of that say what's happening now is the saving of many lives yes. that's i don't know which version that is it might be the message i don't know <laughs> niv whatever yeah. whatever nlt whatever it is whatever version that is that's always been my favorite was what's happening now is the saving of many lives and i don't want to claim that i'm that's not me it's is that's up to god uh, right, i yeah. control the inputs and god controls the outcome but uh you know what what someone else meant for evil i hope in my life when it's all over and those six people are standing around that <laughs> hospital bed like we talked about yeah. i hope they say that i took what the enemy took for evil and i turned it for good and it was the saving of many lives many being yes. 5 10 5 2 what what i don't know what that number is right but man if if we all finish well then i do believe that when we you know meet our savior he's going to yeah. say well done right I love what you said. So for those listening to this small platform, uh, understand that this platform exists because of Genesis 50, 20. That's awesome. And the fact that there was pain, I have a purpose. And and I love that about your book as well. That's, that's why the more I studied, like before we got on, I'm like, wow, we have a lot in common. And that's one of those things is pain, purpose, and platform. I love that so much. I really do, man. Yeah. And that's where, you know, you're talking about your, your grace, series and Mm -hmm. the the walking up to good friday and and looking at that for people i realized good friday is a term that was coined after sunday happened Mm. and i think it's important for people to understand that while friday was happening for jesus and you could even say stemmed to his his followers his 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 allies, his hoplite group. In that moment, it was anything but good. All right. they saw was chaos, darkness. Right. And it's, it's, yes. And it wasn't until after Sunday mm-hmm. was the, the, it was it coined as Good Friday. And I think that it's, it's very important for people to understand, even, you know, now you look at your life and you go after your pain, after your, purpose platform yay congrats you know and that is awesome and i look at yeah. my life and go yay congrats like i have a book right. but it wasn't <laughs> my chaos was not good in the moment mm. it only it was only good after i felt like sunday happened and i right. want people to refresh their their perspective on what friday is and what sunday is but also what saturday is and to <sighs> me Right. Something that I have been really focused on and, and more than anything else is Saturday because right. Friday happened. And a lot of times you can look at your life and go, this happened. Chaos happened. My uh, spouse walked out on me or lost my job. You can look at, I got my diagnosis, you know, that sort of thing. That Friday's happened. Now you're sitting in the Saturday season and of you're going, if? yes. And you're going, wow. When is Sunday coming? And for the disciples, it was 24 hour turnaround. Cool. That had to be scary for sure. For us, we have to understand that it may not be 24 hours that you have that turnaround. But the good thing that we have on, on the disciples is that we know for sure, for sure that Sunday is coming. A hundred percent. And so for people who are in that Saturday season that are going, I, I'm ready. I'm ready for the morning. Yeah. I'm, I'm done morning. M O U R. And, that's right. that's and I'm ready right. for the morning. M O R. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing we have to just hold out for and know for these people that are struggling right now that are listening to understand that you may be in your Saturday season, but Sunday is coming. And when Sunday comes, Jesus walked out of his grave and you're going to walk out of your shame. You're going to walk out of your tomb of, of regret. You're going to walk out just like he did. Yeah. I mourn on Good Friday because I know what our Savior had to yeah, go through yeah, for, for sure. me. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I mourn uh, because it's just, it's brutal what he had to go through because of my sin. And that 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 alone, and I think when you grasp that. But to your point, on Saturday, imagine I'm a huge North Carolina basketball fan. Oh, and I'm when sorry. they lose, 
<laughs> Stop it. When they lose, I, I, you know, what I mean, like everything I hoped for, everything I put my my chips in the middle of the table, right? We're we're so sports fans. When you put your chips in the middle of a table for whatever team that is, and they they don't win, there's this there's this sad season. If and let's get even more real. If you have a marriage and you put everything you have to in that marriage and it ends, you're in Saturday. You know. Right. If you believed in someone, maybe it's not a marriage, maybe it's a friend, a coworker, a job. There's a lot of different things you can put into Saturday where you've put everything you believe. And so for the disciples, even because they did not know he was going to rise again on Sunday, even though he told them yeah, on that Saturday, everything that they had given up, every hope and dream they had for the time that they were with him was gone. Yep. And there was silence. And so to your point, I, I think that's why Saturday is so difficult, but yeah, Sunday's coming. Yeah. And, and he knew that and, and he still knows that. So to right. your point, if, if you're listening to this, he still knows Sunday's coming, yeah. but we don't. And yes. so it's for, I love what you said because Saturday is not a day of, oh, okay, well, 24 more hours, he'll be coming out of the grave. Man, we didn't yeah. know, and they right. didn't know, and now we have the benefit of knowing that. But yeah. for anyone in that season, if you're in that season and your heart's hurting and you're unsure of what's ahead, you know, a, as you said, man, Sunday's coming. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you when and you can't tell them when, but Sunday is coming. Right. And that's, you know, look at the disciples, what they did do. When Jesus, after he resurrected and he came back, I talk about it in my book is he's the the zombie of all zombies, you know, because <laughs> he's <laughs> resurrected. And so he's like, he walks up, you know, and what are they doing? The fishermen are back fishing. Right. They reverted back to their old life mm. all because of the Saturday season. Mm. And I think that's so important to understand. And even Jesus was like to Peter, you know, they had breakfast and they were sitting there, you know, over the fire and he's asking and talking to Peter. And finally he tells Peter, like, do you love me? And he asked him three times. He's like, okay, we'll go and do what we originally discussed you doing. <laughs> and that's what's so, so frustrating for me is like when I was in my Saturday season, I was like, well, there all hope is out the, the window. I'm going to revert back to my old ways because why try? Right. Why right. try? Right. But we understand now as Christians that, yes, yeah, Sunday is coming and we don't know the exact day and we don't know the exact time, but I do know it's going to happen. And for, for Joseph, unfortunately, we can read his whole story in one sitting, but that was 13 years of his life. And for me, I, I crazy enough, I went through exactly 13 years of my chaos. Wow. And even more surprising enough, 13 is Taylor Swift's. Favorite number, <laughs> but no, it's but you it's just so lost half the audience, <laughs> right? Yeah, they're like, Turn off. So, I'll, I'll, I'm glad I went ahead and mentioned where they could buy the book. So, so I did it early. Yeah. I did not know. I didn't know Taylor Swift was coming, but I'm I'm a Swifty dad, so I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Well, you have to. There you go. I always <laughs> tell people there's a few versions to your story. There's like your version, how you see yourself, how the enemy sees you. How God sees you in Taylor's version. Yeah, that's what I always tell people. So there's a few different. All right, wait, wait. Dynamite tie in because the first. Sorry, that's that's fantastic. I got to read this book. All right, there's three things that you mentioned that you hope for, and that is hope, health, and humor. And you just you just displayed like all three in about a yeah. two minute span there. And this was again this unscripted man. We did not plan this, but I, that was my first note. Was you said hope, health, and humor. You just showed all three. So I think that's what people will find in the book, man. Where can they find it again? Give us the the, the title, the links, everything. Where can they find you on socials? So just give us the yeah. big everything. Pretty much, if if you're driving, if you if you remember nothing else from like how to find it all, just go to thenoahasher.com. You can find my socials there. You can find where to buy the book there. But the book is called Chaos, Overcoming the Overwhelming. We try to make it as easy as possible. So thenoahasher.com. Instagram is thenoahasher. So again, just remember thenoahasher and you should be able to find the book. All This is what I, I love is when it comes to finding pain or purposing your pain. 
and then finding that platform. I do not receive any of the profits for this book. All proceeds for this book actually provides copies to prison libraries and rehab centers across America. Come on, man. Seriously? Yeah. So I don't get any of the money for it. So that hope of me buying a new car, I'm just kidding. But all that's out out the window. No, it was my decision. I really wanted to, again, be the brightest of lights for people in their darkest of pits. And so I wanted to bring this message into these places where I know are dark. I know our people are on that ledge ready to give up and they're in their Saturday season. And I wanted them to be able to pick up this book and say, hey, I am. This is me. I'm in my Saturday season. And and give them that hope that Sunday is coming. Man, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, literally till just now, I didn't know that. That means you didn't watch that whole video on my website. <laughs> <laughs> so, I watched well, enough of it to take know. notes, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, 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 I'm, I'm just impressed. Kidding. I'm impressed with the notes, so I appreciate <laughs> that for sure. No, I just have well, to honestly, I'm, I'm glad I didn't watch it. No, no disrespect. I'm glad I didn't watch that to find that out. I did not know that. So yeah. all of your proceeds are, are going to something greater than yourself. Yes. I wanted, for me, it was while I was locked up, I was writing letters to my family and my friends, my mm. hoplite people and, and telling them things like, Hey, I'm going to get through this. We're going to get through this. And it was really therapeutic. It was really for me to keep writing it until I believed it myself. And once I got out, my mom, she's phenomenal. She actually had, if she's listening, I love you. Send me money. No, but book. she, <laughs> buy the book, mom. She had a suitcase, the old fashioned suitcase, and it had like arrows on it and different things. And she put every letter I ever wrote her in there. Mm. And she said, when you're ready, it's, it's yours. Mm. And for a while, it, when I, Thought I was ready for it. I wasn't. It was a lot of tears, but I ended up taking some of those and going, wow. And that's why I write with hope, help, and humor, because I realized that's what I needed when I was locked up was I needed hope. I needed help. I needed humor to get mm. out of this and to get through this more than anything. And so I took all of that and I formulated this book. And that's why I was like, oh, I, this book is, is not for me to profit off of. I want this book to help save many lives as Genesis 50, 20 talks about. Man. Well, I don't think we've heard the last from you. Uh, I know you haven't heard the last from me. Cause as soon as you give me my, your, your cell phone number offline, we're, I'm going to be blowing up your phone. <laughs> You'd be you like, man, I wish I never got on this with this guy, <laughs> but no, I, man, I don't think we've heard the last from you because I just think that uh, it's incredible. And I, I think we've shared a little bit of it, but I, I'm just amazed when I sit back and, and actually see how God has orchestrated our even conversation today. Yeah. Uh, seriously, just from our favorite verse to your humor, man, I, all right. Last place. Everybody can get at your links. I, let's, let's say it one more time yes. for the people in the back. Yeah, it's the com. The like T H E, not D as in dog, but the com. The Noah Asher is my rap handle. So don't go to hey, the let's Noah. Go. Yeah. The You're in the ATL, man. That's that's how you roll, right? That's that is how I roll for sure. But uh, no, so the Noah com. They can pick up the book, buy a few, give them to, to some friends, buy them for some people who need some hope. Again, it's this isn't a, a plug for me to to fund a, a Disney cruise. This is how I, I can make sure people are getting the hope they need because yeah. this is so important. And if you if you think that it's not for you in the season you're in, great. I'm proud of you for not being in your a, a Saturday season. That's awesome. Yeah. But I do know, and this isn't some doomsday mindset. But I do want you to know that storms come. Battles come whether you want to or not. In fact, I, a pastor one time said that if you don't run into the enemy every now and then, you're probably walking in the same direction. Mm. So, it, so if you never experience chaos, you may want to just you may want to <laughs> re reevaluate some of those sorts of things in your life. But yeah. again, it's not doomsday to say, "Hey, chaos is coming, batting down the hatches, get in your storm shelter and hide." No continue to live life, but this book is designed to to make sure that you're prepared. In fact, I break this book down in three parts. The first part of the book is called Prepare, 
And it goes, okay, before storms come, before battles come your way, how can we do that? And mm. one, like we talked about, finding those hoplite people. And, and then also we look at things like who I am really is. You know, Moses talks about, you know, coming across God in the burning bush. And God tells him what to do. And Moses goes, well, who should I say sent, sent me? And God goes, I am. Mm-hmm. Period. Right. <laughs> and if I were Moses, I'd be like, I am what? Like, you, didn't, right. you know, bad connection. What, you know, just buffering. <laughs> but he... He's, he is the, I am. And it's so important to learn the characteristics of God now before the bottom drops out of the sky. Because I'm telling you, when you learn that when you're going through your chaos and you experience illness, but you've already learned God saying, Hey, I am the healer. Mm. It makes illness a little bit easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you lose, you know, when I lost my father, it was understanding as God standing there, hey, I am your father. And a Darth Vader voice. Um, for sure. Sure. Yeah. I am your father. But he's, he's there saying those things. And so it's yeah. better to learn that now before it ever happens. So if you're not in a season of chaos, understand that that part of the book is great because it's going to help you understand and learn a little bit more of who God is. I, there's a chapter about Elijah. And it's, it's funny to me. It's, we think a, a busy life is a fulfilling life. And mm-hmm. it's under, understanding through the life of Elijah that that's not always the case. And so that's why the first part of the book is dedicated to preparing. The second section of the book is in the midst. And it's like, how do we, once the storm dissipates and the enemy retreats, what do we, or excuse me, once the storm is there and we're, we're fighting, what do we do? And anyone who's picked up a book on chaos for the most part is in chaos. So, yeah. That's the meat of the book. In the third section, that's what I meant by saying when the storm dissipates and the enemy retreats, I've called the third section of the book the aftermath. Because a lot mm-hmm. of times we're left in rubble and we have to learn to rebuild. And it's a scary time, but it's also an exciting time to say, you know what? This time around, I'm going to pick up the rocks mm-hmm. and build a firm foundation on God. And I'm going to make sure that we're rebuilding properly. And that's something wow. that my team and I are working on right now. We're looking at doing so many things, so many cool things. We're working on a halfway house um, for our area. This is going to change. It's going to be a faith-based halfway house of some tiny homes in a circle. And in the middle is going to be a community center. And it's actually mm. going to be called the aftermath. And the tagline wow. will be where rebuilding begins. And so it's just so crucial and perfect. And if you guys are wondering, how do I partner on things like that? You can go to the com. We are finally launching something really cool. There's a tab at the top called Hire Me and or Hire Us or something, but it says that and it's going to have ways we can help authors, Christian authors who are just getting off the ground and helping them grow their, their platform and help them in a financially easy way. And what's really cool is we're taking some proceeds of that to to build the kingdom. So it's 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 crazy. It's really cool. Again, purpose in my in my pain. And then also to try to build that platform is, is what I'm trying to do. That's what you're doing, Aaron. So I appreciate that. And and any listeners who's listening to this and going, what do I do? I'm in my Saturday season. First off, know that Sunday is coming. And then also look for, okay, how can I turn my my pain into purpose? I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> like, seriously, the more I listen to you, the more I hear your vision, the more that we've shared our hearts together, the more we share our favorite verse, which is Genesis 50, 20, man, I'm, I'm blown away. And I just have to tell everybody, we have not heard the last from you. Thank um, you. So I, please go blow up his website, not yeah. literally, but, but please, literally please. follow him, give, give Noah all of all your clicks for the six, seven people that listen. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, but whoever listens, please go, go follow him and let's just keep the journey going, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm so excited that, that God literally just kind of found the way that you and I connected today. I'm, and thanks for your grace yesterday. We had to reschedule. So thanks for your grace yesterday. And I'm very, very thankful that I got time with you today. And this is not the last time we're going to talk. I promise you that because well, we you. have a lot to unpack. And all right, the book, the site, one last time. Everything, com. 
and follow us on Instagram, the Noah Asher. And again, you can click the links. Everything's in one hub. Makes it easy. The Noah So go get his book and, and know that he's not getting rich off of that. Yeah. There's a lot of other things probably that you're doing and, and hopefully we can help you financially in that way. But man, that's even more important. This book is not for you. It's for everybody else. That's incredible that you did that and that yeah. you've given that gift to everybody else, man. That's yeah, incredible. The idea that, cause I believe in the book and it's not just cause I wrote it, but I'm, I yeah. believe so wholeheartedly in it. And it's so awesome that you can buy a book today and I believe it's going to change your life. But it's also the fact that when you purchase Ripples. that book today, it's, it's also helping someone's life inside a, a prison or a rehab center. It's Genesis fifty twenty, brother. Yeah. Genesis fifty twenty. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for coming on Unscripted. And this is not the last we've heard from you. I guarantee you that. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Unscripted Podcast. Make sure to review and share wherever you listen to your podcast. It really helps out our mission to encourage everyone to live life unscripted. Until next time, keep living life unscripted.